Cool. Hopefully, uh, I don't know why it's live. Why is it live? Record only. Okay, I think we're just recording. Anyway, um, cool. So we went. We had a bunch of technical difficulties there. Now using your cell phone, we're good. Hi, I'm Mike. You are Melba, yep. and you are in the Palm Beach County area in Florida, yep. and you own a plumbing contracting business. Yep. And I assume you have a license holder, or you're working on yep. that, or and that's why you're taking the, your business and finance law exam, and you'll be taking the plumbing exam the same time I am in Kissimmee in August. Yep. Awesome. Uh, so you reached out to me um, because I put a video on the un uncensored channel on how I passed with an 80.83. And I'm proud of that, by the way. Uh, I think you could be. <laughs> there's 125 questions. Yeah. And I utilize the same uh, technique that I use to pass my exams in South Carolina. Um, you know, in New York, we don't have these uh, computer-based exams. You know, the plumbing exam, it's a practical exam. Uh, and it is actually, you have to build this thing, you know, with pipe and, um, there's no computer. There's no proctor, you know, you just, well, there's a proctor, but, uh, it's different, you know, you know, like in South Carolina, also in Florida. So in the state of Florida, you have an open book exam. And in this video, we're strictly going to talk about how to pass the construction business and finance exam. Now you have a bunch of books that they let you keep, let you bring in number one. We have this book, The Builder's Guide to Accounting. Yeah. This is the, I don't know, the revised edition. You, oh, I see you have tabs already on it. Awesome. You're also allowed these, these things, the IAI, the 201, the 401, the 701. Uh, you're allowed to tab that as well and highlight. And then you have the this. Bible. This the is the Bible. And the it's thick. Now, in comparison, I just want to show you something. So, I don't really plan on doing much commercial work, but in Florida, it's either, you know, you're a contractor or you're not. There's no residential or commercial buildup. But in, in the state of South Carolina, you see this little book right here? Yeah, I saw your video. <laughs> now, the one for commercial is a little bit thicker than residential, but if you pass the commercial, you get the residential. But that's about it. You made me want to move to South Carolina, by the way, saying that. I was like, that's where I should go. <laughs> Well, I am going to make, be making an announcement uh, with what I plan on doing with my South Carolina license, sure, uh, within the next week or two. Okay. Uh, it's good news to those who have been a supporter of mine, you know, for a very long time, or if you're just joining in on my adventure. Uh, real quickly, you know, I have been in the plumbing and heating and air conditioning business since 2004. Uh, I've owned my own business since 2009. Uh, I'm a licensed master plumber in certain jurisdictions in New York State, the entire state of South Carolina. I have a home improvement contractor license in certain jurisdictions in New York, which allows me to do HVAC. And I have HVAC license in for residential in the state of South Carolina. I am a, I'm also I'm expanding into Florida, God willing, by passing two more exams. I got one done. I got two more to go. And I'm really excited about that. Um, but I did all of this and what I've accomplished so far in my professional journey uh, by means of the community, the YouTube community. Um, they have motivated me to expand. You know, I was talking about it and I would love to do it. But, you know, uh, about two years ago, I got a phone call from Conrad from K Plumbing Services in Lexington, South Carolina. Uh, we made a lot of moves together, but unfortunately, we just couldn't figure out the, the, the nitty gritty and the fine print. And, I, you know, he's a great guy. We learned a lot. We still talk. Uh, and it's just, we're, we're great, uh, but we're not business partners. <laughs> um, but my, my goal was, you know, to, from New York to Florida and then work my way up the East coast, utilizing the principles that my company uses on a daily basis, you know, to promote, you know, professionalism, in the trade, uh, you know, wearing the booties, rolling out the red carpet, wiping your feet on your carpet, putting your booties on, uh, presenting, you know, options on the repair, because that's mostly what we do, service and repair. You right. know, we go into a home or a location, you know, we present ourselves, you know, we, we have to befriend them professionally because at the end of the day, they have to they have to like who they're doing business with. And if you don't like who you're doing business with, you'll probably tell them to, okay, thank you for your opinion. I'm going to call somebody else, you know, and get their opinion, you get a second opinion. So I try to promote that. And that's how I've grown, grown my business. And that's how I plan on expanding my business um, in, in other states. So the issue at hand is here is now 
how to pass the Florida construction business and finance exam. You have all these books, right? You have the builder's guide to accounting, which sucks, right? This is the, this is a horrible book. My accountant probably wouldn't be able to pass, um, without opening this book and actually knowing what a cruel accounting is and all this other nonsense, which is hard. And we'll talk about that. Right. You have these IAIs, you know, for contract, you know, your, your, your contractor owner, contract architect relationships and the contract for construction, estimating all that good stuff. Those are in those. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but the most important thing is this book right here. You have to be able to navigate through this book. So I have this broken up into a few sections. I am going to start with here. And at any time, feel free to stop me and we'll go from there. So number one, we have time management. Um, I'm not, a, you know, I, I'm, I'll probably make mistakes here and there with, with quoting facts. But to my understanding, you have 120 questions. You have six and a half hours to answer it. Five questions are placebo ones. Basically, they're basically test questions that... You know, Pearson View in the state of Florida are looking to introduce them to the exam protocol. And um, listen, if everyone gets it right, they're not going to use it, obviously, that question, because they want, you know, to have some people not get it right because it's a, a bit, it becomes a tricky question. So you have 125 questions. Five won't be counted. So even, but you don't know which five those are. Um, six and a half hours. I know it seems like oh, it's a long day, but the the, the the techniques that I that I used in South Carolina, I applied them for my taking my exam in Florida. And that is I went into the exam room ready to go. You know, I went to the bathroom beforehand at the facility. I washed my hands. You know, right now, you, sometimes you get that sticky feeling after working all day or whatever. You get the, the nervousness, your little palms are sweaty. I washed myself off in the bathroom, you know, threw some water in my face, making sure you know, I'm not thirsty. I don't do it in the bathroom. You know, if you're nervous, you know, use the bathroom beforehand. But I try not to get up or leave the room. And maybe I can get up and stretch a little bit, lean back. But what worked for me so far is not getting up out of the chair. Because you only have six and a half hours. And believe it or not, you will run out of time unless you, 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 you manage part one, which is time management. And I'm going to look at my screen up there because I took notes along this because I want to try to, you know, have some kind of like a curriculum here or a protocol I'm following or just summary. But um, you have to understand that regardless, you know, you still everyone gets the same amount of time and it's pass or fail. You need a 70 to pass and um, either you're going to pass or you fail, basically, you know, you, you, but you have to be able to manage time. So. Uh, one of the biggest things, you know, a few people have contacted me by email, also by messenger DMs after my exam uh, was about a month ago was, um, you know, people have taken this exam a couple times or one time. And the common denominator out of all of, out of the five people that emailed me was I ran out of time and I failed. Um, so I want to I want to make this, this video, which is probably about half hour, 45 minutes long on how to do your best to pass. Um, so you need time management. So when you go into Pearson view to take this exam, you're going to get a eight and a half by 11 piece of plastic paper with a dry erase uh, pencil or, or pen. And one side is going to be like, and I guess rules or whatever. And the other side is blank. So the first thing that I would recommend doing is read every single question, um, quickly, you know, go, you know, start at question one, go through 125 just so you have an understanding of what's going on and in, in, a, in a corner or a section of that piece of plastic that you have to write on, because not a piece of paper, but let's refer to it as a piece of paper for argument's sake with a pencil, right? And, and a portion of that may be right, uh, you know, like, like one ca own column, you know, yes, uh, no, question mark. So, and as you go through this, you know, if, let's say you go, you're question number one, I know what this answer is. It's, you know, it's, Answer C, you know, it's multiple choice, A, B, C, and D. And A, B, C, D is one of the topics of parts of this I'm going to teach you about. Um, so let's say question number one, you know, it's, you know, it's answers number A is answers A. You're going to put a little one into the yes, yes column. Don't answer it on the computer, right? Well, you can, though. If you're 100% uncertain, do it. Answer that, right? And go up to the next. And as you come across one like, oh, I, don't, I have no idea what this is, you know, um, put, it, put, it, put that number in the, in the no part. And also... I don't want to jump in between back and forth, but we got to try to figure out what book that question could be in. And you could do that the first time around or the second time around. 
So as you're going through the 125 questions, try to get, a, get an idea of which ones are you got, you know, cat, you know the, 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 the cat's in the bag. You got that for sure, 100%. Ones that are questionable, like, oh, you know what, is it this or is it that? Put that in the question mark. And if you have no idea, put that in the no category. And um, we'll go, you know, we'll talk about that in a little bit. The, the, biggest, the, big, the biggest reason is people run out of time is because they're taking 15, 20, 30 minutes to answer a question and, um, and, and they're getting jammed up. And one thing I noticed in the beginning of the exam are the, the math ones or the accounting questions, right? And I, I couldn't, I can't even begin to explain how many times I'm cursing myself. I'm not cursing myself, cursing this, this exam um, cause asking about, you know, employment taxes or, um, what was the other one or accounting methods or cash basis. And this, and I'm like, listen, I have QuickBooks. I have a bookkeeper. I have an account. I have Intuit online payroll. What the fuck do I need this for? Right. right. Uh, and I'm just cursing. I was like, Oh my God, what's wrong with these people? Like, why do I need to know this? And I take a breath and I'm like, you know what? That'll be in my question mark or my no column. And let me tell you something. I went through 125 questions and at those 125 questions, I had a, pro and I was doing, you know, um, one, two, three, four, five, you know, one, two, three, four, five, marking like that. So I had, I can count instead of counting one, two, three, four, five, six. And when I went through all 125 questions, I realized that, you know what, I got, the, I got, I got this. I'll pass because I have roughly around 70%, 70 answers right. I know they're right. Now I got to worry about the remaining ones, which is, I don't know, uh, 60, whatever it is. I don't know. It's, it's yeah. like my horrible math. That's why I have a calculator, which yeah. I let you carry, it, it, let you bring in. Um, so I w went through all the questions and it made, it made a chart of what I think is right and what, what is wrong and what is, what is questionable. That's a great message. Uh, any questions so far? No. Okay. Um, back to the beginning. You have to, you know, you have in the beginning of the, who's on my front door? At the beginning of the uh, exam is usually the hard math questions, right? Um, you may, you, you, I don't know if you're good at math or not good at math. Me, I'm not really good at math. But if I know the formula or know how how things work, I'm able to, I'm able to answer the question. But the beginning of the exam are, are usually the, the math questions and I like to skip them unless I really, really, really know what the, what the answer is. Um, I have sample questions there here somewhere. You're like one, one question is, um, uh, da, 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 where is it? Uh, you know, like trying to find out, uh, you're reconciling your bank statement and your checkbook is unavailable and blah, blah, blah. blah. And then you have a bank charge. The bookkeeper failed to enter this and checks. But, but, but there's usually, usually unnecessary, unnecessary information they give you to try to, you know, try to spell you and try to trick you. So I, I like to skip the math questions and come back to them if I have like an hour and a half left, like I did um, uh, on exam day. Um, but you, the most important thing is that you have to manage your time. Um, when, you, when, you, when you go through those first 125 questions, that'll probably take you about, you know, half hour, 45 minutes. And that seems like, wow, it's so long. I was like, but it's 125 questions. Yeah. And if, if you spend, you know, like a minute on each, <laughs> that's, that's too long, right? Because that's an hour, two hours, that's two hours already, right? So you really want to quickly scan through them and spend maybe, you know, 20, 30 seconds on each. Just say so you have an idea of what's going on and make little notes as you go along because you can run out of time. Um. So read all the questions um, on the second round, you know, and now go to round two. So, um, read, you know, you go to question number one, you know the answer, mark it, and move off to the next. Don't spend, don't spend any more time wasting on it. Just, okay, if you know that, uh, you know, which of the, here's, an, here's, a, here's a, a sample question. All the following can be accomplished as a result of a good cash budget except A, B, C, and D. And two of those things really don't make any sense. Two do, and there's only one answer. And the answer is rec reconciliation of a bank statement. But you'll know that that kind of question will be in the accounting handbook, which is this one, right? And we'll talk about how to find books and tabbing and keywords in, in uh, a little bit later in this thing. But uh, you don't want to get jammed up with 
uh, wasting time because uh, you'll run out of time and you'll maybe not pass. Questions so far? No. You're good. Good. Okay. So the next one is keywords. Um, you have code books or books like this, which will reference, and this, which will reference, you know, four, four words, which is shall, must, minimum, min, or max, max, maximum. Um, if you see one of those words, chances are it's going to be in here. The IAI, right? Or in the big giant blue book, right? Um, handbook, for example, right? Here, the, you know, the builder's guide to accounting, you know, they're going to, you know, the process to do the job or the process of how to, uh, you know, balance the books or cash flow statements and things like that. Uh, the techniques on how you should do things or recommended or suggested, those keywords, recommended, suggested. Um, you know, because like, look, this, listen, this book is not going to tell you how to do it, but it's going to tell you this is what the code states, right. how it shall be done. Or you must do it this way. Or as a minimum, you need this. Or max, you need that. Um, referencing also keywords, let's say, according to IAI 201, blah, 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 blah. You already know now. Like, listen, it's all going to be in 201. And as long as it's, as long as you have an idea of what's in there, uh, you'll be able to find it. You know, as long as you have a good understanding of what's in there, you've, you've highlighted and you've tabbed correctly. And we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, you'll be able to find it because... 20% of your questions will tell you what book it's in. You know, according to the builder's guide to accounting, you know, blah, blah, blah is, you know, means this, you know, blank is this. And that's where you use the glossary or the index to help you find the answer. Cool. Cool. Yep. All right. Next, and I'm not even using this. Let's go back here. Tips and tricks. We skipped uh, two keywords, but now we're yeah, tips and tricks. I wrote it down. I heard you. <laughs> Um, you know, like definitions. I love definition questions, you know, like blank means blank or blank is blank. Um, you know, if you don't know what blank is, look at the question, look at the answers they're giving you. It's multiple choice, A, B, C, or D. And generally two out of those four are not related at all. And two are, and it's a 50, 50 chance that even if you don't even open the book, that you're getting it right. Um, so utilizing the table of contents, the index, um, you should definitely have a tab on your table of contents, on your index, the glossary definitions. Uh, those are very important sections that need to be tabbed. And when I say tabs, like, you know, like this is my, the, the Florida contractors manual. I have, listen, it's organized tabs. You can see it there, right? Yep. And even on the top, but you don't want to have them like right on top of one another where you're not going to be able to see right. it. You know, right. you, when you're starting in the tab, like start, uh, you know, the top, top of it and work your way down and also utilize the top of the binding and also the bottom yep. and you'll be able to find it. But don't just start randomly tabbing like, like this book, right? This is a book that I bought from actually the instructor, but there's, there's tabs everywhere. You, you, you can't, you can't see anything. And I have, I used a label maker and I did things like that. I don't know how do your tabs look. I did in here, here, okay. and here, just like you're saying. So. Did you rent books or you bought a brand new and you tabbed them I yourself? Bought, I bought them. And you tabbed yourself? Yeah. I did. Good. I highly recommend because it forces you to read the books. Yeah. Um, I was at a South Carol, my first South Carolina exam, which was in Myrtle Beach. That's the one I made the weekend out with my wife. My wife's at the beach on a, on a, on a I think it was a Monday. I believe it was a Monday. It was a Friday. It was a Friday. And um, two back-to-back -back exams. So I had the, the South Carolina business and uh, the business law and management. And then I had the trade, then I had the trade exam, which was air conditioning. Um my door is so busy today. I don't get it. Why? It's like so many people coming to my house. It's crazy. And it's six o'clock. Um, but there was one guy who's there. Um, and I was the first one there. It starts at eight o'clock. I think I was there at seven, seven fifteen. nervous. And I was told that the Myrtle beach location was the best place to take an exam because the guy there will actually help you. 
not help you like you know get to give you the answers, but let's say uh, your nerve, it'll, it'll kind of calm your nerves. So I went there and I checked myself in, opened my, oh, and emptied my pockets. You know, he, I gave my cell phone in the car key, put it in a bag, put it in a desk, uh, and uh, I put it in the bag and put it over my chair. I'm sorry, but another guy came in right after me. The books were still wrapped in plastic. He's never even opened them up. I'm like. And at one point, I think it's maybe it's like maybe three hours in. It's like maybe it's 11 o'clock. I looked over. He's gone. <laughs> and I know he had, you know, the, the, the one of the exams. I forgot which one it was, but he was there for at least till one o'clock. He was gone. I'm like, all right. I guess he gave up. <laughs> what? Uh, but one of one of the tricks, uh, and I have it written down in one of the other cat, uh, categories or parts, is that you really should be skimming through these books. You know, like. And I haven't really even touched my air conditioning books, which I'm taking. I'm taking my air exam, air B exam. Uh, the, I think July six, maybe, um, here in New York. I've opened the op I've opened the books up. I haven't really studied all of them, but you really need to take some time and actually go through. I wouldn't say page by page, but listen, if you're in, you know, the FC, the, the blue book, the Florida's Contractors Manual. You know, it, it gets into like licensing, like, okay, blah, 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 blah. But one of the questions that I really, I couldn't find at my exam is if you take this exam, how long is it valid for if you don't apply for a license? You know what the answer is? I, no, uh, no, I can't oh, think of, I did read it somewhere, it's but it's I didn't remember. It's in the blue book and it's <laughs> under licensing section which is chapter two right okay. and it's in there and i just couldn't find it and i probably wasted i don't know maybe 15 minutes oh, um, okay. time trying to find that so that was one of the questions i had like when you if you take your 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 um your construction build um the building fine uh the finance exam uh, and, and if you don't apply for a license, how long is it valid for? And it's a few years. I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's a few years. But again, if, if, but if you've never opened up the book before, you're going to be clueless. And even if you buy them tabbed like this, which I don't suggest you do them because you need to know where to put the tabs, right? Like this is a tab book. I, I, I bought a tab book. When I was take, when I, when I got the, the Florida thing, you know, in, into my head, you know, when I visited my, uh, my in-laws in Boynton Beach um, almost a year ago, and I had a, sent a ductless mini split installed by this hack, who's not even who you know who's not even the license holder. He has a um, an age you know the the license holder managing the business. Like I'm like, bro, you never put a ductless in before. But I asked you beforehand. You've done it. Before? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He made a mess. Took him all day, and I, he's the reason why. He knows this. <laughs> he's the reason why I'm doing this now. Part it pushed me to do it. Accelerated it. I would have been fine in New York, South Carolina. Let me get South Carolina rolling, and then I'm going to conquer Florida. Yeah, I'm going to conquer Florida, or I'm going to conquer Florida together. You with are going to have so much work here because there's so many crappy contractors. It's like disgusting. Yeah, uh, and people don't want to work. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that too. <laughs> um, so back to the tips and tricks, like the index, definitions, the glossary. Um, literally, you can pass this exam just by knowing, you know, utilizing the index and how and knowing knowing what keywords to look for. You know, like uh, you need use the index. You can find the answers. Seriously. Okay. But um, one thing, uh, you know, you can take the, the, the exam in English or in Spanish. So if like English is not your primary language, your second language, your Spanish is, I, you know, you, you, you'd be a fool not to take it in Spanish. I'm not a Spanish speaking person. I know un poquito español, right? But if you're Spanish speaking as, as your primary language, or you know it much better than English, you know, you really should be taking the exam in, in Spanish because, you know, listen, a half hour that, that or an hour that you'll, you'll save because it's your native language will be to your benefit. Use it if it's there, you know? Um, I don't know what to uh, da, 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 da. okay let's see if you get stuck on a on a question um, don't spend more than a couple minutes on it skip it you can mark it on the computer like you can um, they let you mark it and you can go back to all the mark questions uh, at the end and how, review them how do they let you mark it like you because it's on the computer you're at you're at a desk um, right. so 
a little a little monitor. You have a keyboard. You have a mouse, and um, you have the you have the piece of paper. You know the the plastic and the and the pen, and on the on the on the screen you'll mark it. You know, oh, see okay. a, little, a little thing, a little, like a radio button, and you'll mark it or check it. I don't remember. You have to, you can mark it with the mouse, and you click on it, and boom, it's marked. Okay. And even if you answer it, you can still you can still mark it. So let's say you know you pick A, A, B, C, and multiple choice. You picked A, but you're unsure of it. You mark it, and you go back to it and and review it. So gotcha. but don't spend too much time on one question. Like again, you know, one of the main the common the common denominator of people failing that I've heard is that they got stuck up on a question. They spend 15, 20, 30 minutes like. Come on, you're out of your mind. What's wrong with you? This is skip it. You know, it's it's 125 questions, you know, six and a half hours. It goes by quickly. It yeah. really does. I got up, I had I had like 70 minutes left. You don't wow. know what time it is. You don't know what time it is. You don't have a watch on, you have no jewelry, there's nothing in your pockets. All you have is a stupid little piece of paper and that dry erase pen, and you have a clock time remaining in the corner. Wow. On the screen. You have no idea what time it is. And I didn't realize about the, I'm so, you know, in tune with the questions and the exam, what's in front of me. I did not realize that there was a timer for the first three hours. <laughs> I had no idea it was there. I was reading the questions, right. And, and reading the answers and figuring out which is, which is the answer based on what, what's in front of me. Wow. Um, but that's why you got the 88. <laughs> 80.83. Oh, 80. Yeah, it's still good. <laughs> uh, and then, the, uh, what's that? As long as you see that passing mark, you're so friggin' exactly. like weight flipped. Yep. Um, have you done any practice exams? I I have. So as you know, at the end of the each chapter in the accounting portion, you have those exams, um, yes. and I think you use them too. I'm using the exam pros. So okay. he's like some, you know, some, um, some of those exams. So yeah, I am working on those and I am, I'm trying to get in at least, at least an hour and a half to two hours of reading and, you know, just studying every night. If I can, there are some yeah. days I haven't been able to, cause as you know, life happens. Life, life occurs, you know, and, <laughs> and we have a business, so. um, I'm the bookkeeper. I'm the time manager for the business. I'm the scheduler. I'm the everything behind the scenes. So it's a lot. Gotcha. Oh. Um, so I was told, and it's worked for me as well, um, that you should take these exams, uh, each exam three times, the practice ones. Yes. Uh, that's first what time, you you yes. read everything. Don't answer it. Uh, try to identify the keywords like min, must, shall, max, uh, or suggested or recommended, because that'll give you the differences between the two books or the, the sets of books that you're using. Uh, the second time, uh, answer the questions utilizing the cheat, the cheat, uh, the key, the answer key at the, at the end. Um, and try remember that, like I have, uh, you know, printouts of, you know, like 125 questions here and, you know, I, I, next to each one, I'll, I, after I read them all, uh, then I'll go to the index and I'll, okay, I'll circle the answer. Or I'll highlight the answer and then I'll write which book. So if it's accounting, accounting, if it's accounting, you know, page set 173, if it's accounting page 173. If it's IAI 201, it's 201 section two one, you know, two one, um, <laughs> And the third time, you know, go through the practice exam without looking at the answer key. Um, utilizing is try to try to think, get it through your head. And like, how am I going to find these answers on exam day? You know, um, try this. Listen, it's not easy. If it was easy, everyone would do it. Right. But um, not to belittle anyone. But if I, I, you know, there's lots of people I see that, are, you know, are hacks, especially down in Florida. And but they're they pass the exams and I'm like I'm thinking in my head well if they can pass it, I can surely pass it yeah. you know, go in there with a winning attitude yeah and and just the right mindset if you go in there like oh my god I'm not gonna pass I'm not gonna pass I'm not gonna pass it uh, you set yourself up for failure you know motivate yourself listen I am gonna pass this I am gonna conquer I am gonna walk out of here uh, with a passing grade. Um, what 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 really got me though, and nervousness. So I already answered all the questions, and then they go, "Are you sure you're done?" Right? And are you sure again? And you have to type in your name, I believe, and then it gives you a questionnaire about how the exam center was. I'm like, "Fuck this!" Like, just tell me what I what I did. Right. And then it says, "Okay, you're all done. You know, uh, get up and, re and and leave your seat." And I'm like, well, "Where's the where's the results?" Like in South Carolina, it tells you right on the screen, pass or fail. Oh, so I'm like, well, now I'm nervous as hell, and I get up out of my seat, and I <laughs> and I had. 
and it's one little room that they use for ADA, you know, for wheelchair or ADA compliant things. And they only gave it to me because they were full with these college kids taking a health MRI exam, whatever, I don't know, some kind of medical uh, health care exam. And it was like literally 20 people in three rooms, but they gave me this one room. Uh, all to myself, which is great because I didn't have to listen to their noise and they're not. But they also give you headphones, you know, the noise kits, oh, okay. you know, like ear thingies. Uh, so I got up and then I went to the front desk and she gives me my key to my locker because they give you a locker to put everything into. And they give you, you know, you take stuff out of your locker, you return the key, and then they give you the piece of paper. And they even say, like, congratulations or better luck next time. Like, you know, uh, good luck. Oh, no, they, I forgot what they, they, she told me. She goes, have a great day. <laughs> Something like that. And I'm like, you know, like, and I look at it, I'm like, yes, fuck yeah, I passed. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't know if you saw my uncensored video. Like, I, I actually recorded a scene in my car once I got to the car. I like, yeah, oh, I did. Yeah. I, it. I know. I it, 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 was it was very funny. exciting because it was really, really, really a hard exam. The yeah. accounting stuff really got me. Um, that's but, the part, like, it's no damn joke. Like, some of those freaking problems, I'm like, what? Like, I'm reading them and they're still, like, not, I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think that's what's getting to me. It's like not even the like the Bible. I call this thing the Bible, but like that I I can f navigate. But the stupid accounting, and I'm not horrible at math, but like you said, those problems, you need you need to be like a mathematician plus. Like I'm like what? So the um, one the, the hardest ones that I had, um, and you really all you need is a calculator to figure it out, but. Based on the, the cost, the, the total price of the job or the contract, you know, what would it cost to buy the, the bond for that for that project? Those those were my hardest, the, those hardest ones. And there were I would say there are four or five questions like that on the exam. And maybe um, one is, is part of like the placebo ones that they don't count. But one of the exams were, OK, so if the if the, the project value is one point seven million dollars, what would the bond cost for this project? And. You have the answers because they're in the book. They're in this book, the blue book, right? And not in the accounting book because that's just general accounting, right? But they're in there. And also uh, in the sample exams, you know, they're there. But listen, if you don't know um, that, you know, the first X thousand equal, you know, oh, yeah. So the first 100,000 is, you know, uh, $25 per whatever. And the next 400,000 is $15. And the next... You know, million is 10. You know, if you don't know those or you don't know how to find those, uh, you just lost, five, you know, four or five questions easily. Um, but listen, you have a 25 percent chance of getting it right. Right. A, B, C, D. You have four questions. That's what part of the last thing with the, the tricks. More tricks is let's say you went through. Uh, a, let's say you went through 10. You went through 10 sample questions. Right. And if you guessed A on all of those. The chances are you're going to get a 25%. You'll get 25% of those correct. If you consistently mark A, if you do like a zigzag or A, C, B, D, E, you know, whatever, A, B, A, you know, if you guess at one of those four randomly, you're less likely to, to get 25% of them right. So if you're going to guess, guess consistently. Yeah. Guess all A's, guess all B's, guess all D's, guess all C's, because you're likely to get a little bit more a slight edge, like playing blackjack. Give a slight yeah. little edge, right, if you count cards, for example. Right, right. right. Uh, but you want to be able to get the get the uh, the edge on the exam. And if you don't know it, process of elimination. Um, but if there's a lot you don't know, uh, stick to one answer and just answer all of them that way. How many um, did you? Um, how many did you like have to put on your nose? Do you remember on your? Okay, so on in my nose, I believe there was like forty. Oh, okay. So I believe That's I had tough. like sixty or sixty-five were yeah. yeses. Okay. And you know, listen, it's one hundred twenty-five, so it's one hundred twenty. So now I already got right away instantly fifty percent. Right. And there's a margin of error because you could think <laughs> it's that, but it's not. So let's say 40% I got right. So now I'm already in two hours into it. I have, I should have a 40% in the bag, 40% right of 50 that I've 50 that I've answered. So now let's try to get the rest and knowing how to find, you know, the answer, the, the answers in the books, because they're in there. They're, it's not like they're making up questions and then they, they don't exist. The answers word for word are in that book. One of my first questions earlier on, of the exam, because it's math, of course, right? And I didn't use this trick then because I totally forgot. But one of the first questions was in this thing. And it was actually, you know, those test questions at the back of the book. 
on the back of the chapter, uh, it was word for word. And it was like the cash movement method describes number six. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, where's number six? All right. Yeah. It was like it was like that. It was like one of those, and it was A, B, C, or D, exactly how it is in the book. And I'm like, no shit. So I looked it up. I'm like, there's the answer. Boom, done. And that that went. And I took my little my little um, finger and I wiped it off from the no and I put it in a yes. And boom, there's another another slash and the yes thing. And one by one, I was getting more of them right. And um, was I co- was I confident I passed when I went got that piece of paper? I think I did well. I, I was unsure. I wasn't sure that it was probably just passed or just failed. And I was surprised that I got a little over 80, 80.83 or 86, whatever it is. How long um, did you study? How long did I study for? It's a great question. Um, not long, honestly. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. I uh, I set up all the books in my dining room and I focused on the tabs and highlighting. Um Tabbing, you know, the chapters that are relevant, you know, with the um, what, what, what's the the program, the the the, the business that we uh, bought from? Oh, from um, Exam Pros. The exam Pros, yeah. So uh, I utilize those, but a lot of it's like, yeah, like I don't need to, I don't need to put a tab on this because I already know it's there because I already skimmed through all the books already. Um, but I, I highlight it, and I, you're not, so, you know, you're not supposed to use a pen to like circle things, but I, I underlined a little bit. Another thing, this camera is like all over you. So do not write in your books. Um, if you write in the books, um, you could be disqualified because you could be helping to document the question that was given or the answer that was given to help oh, others. Oh, while you're taking the test. Yeah, don't write in your book. If you're yeah. going to have the balls to do it or just put like a little dot next to it, like you're ever going to – listen, you pass this, you're never going to open these books ever again. <laughs> like these, <laughs> these books are up in my cabinet. And they're there. What's occupying my dining room table? And it's a big ass dining room table. One side is all the plumbing, which I'm not opening. I'm not touching until after I pass the Air B exam, or until after the Air B exam. And then I'm gonna switch sides if I didn't pass. So right now I'm focusing on Air B, and I'm gonna be more intent on that going into next week. And so you're still working week. full time and running your business, mind you. Like you got to add that yes. in there. And answering uh, people right. like me <laughs> and no, answering emails for generally, help. Generally, generally, I am, I'm, I, you know, I'm no longer in the field at around, you know, 12, 31 o'clock. Okay. I come home and then I do my video processing because every day I post a video because it's made that day generally. And I yeah. upload it to YouTube and I do the keywords and I do all the analytics behind it. So the people will watch it, which it's summertime now. It's the same repetitive content. So less people are watching. The people love the boilers and the furnaces more and the plumbing more than air conditioning over and over and over again. Uh, you never know what people are going to watch, to be honest. But uh, uh, so usually around five o'clock, you know, or after dinner, I will spend, you know, maybe an hour and a half, an hour uh, just reading. Um, or I'll take, you know, one of the books to the bed with me. Uh, like right now, I have the uh, the med gas, the green book for plumbing next to my bed because I hi- we highlighted in the in, in the class I took two weeks ago, uh, you know, two chapters. And it's a little thin little book. There's two chapters, which is most of the book. Um, and I'm just skimming through just so I can, you know, just get into my head of what's in this book and how to find it because keywords and time management, what book to grab. And, you know, you'll get lucky because you'll have questions that say according to. IAI, you know, 401, or according to the Bill's Guide for Accounting, you know, blank shall mean blank, you know. And there's a few of those you said, right? There's a lot of those. Oh, so Maybe 20%, 25% of the questions okay. they say according. And again, your mileage may vary. You know, you could have, you know, more yeah. of this than that. But um, um, one thing that, you know, that really like, got me, and was it was a tax question with dealing with payroll tax and uh, and record and re, uh, paying of those taxes, and it was one thing that I never heard of, and it's uh, FIT, and I I, meant, meant, I thought it meant Florida income tax or federal income tax, but I never even heard of this term before, FIT. But it was one of those stupid things that I know the there's two that are not it, and this is maybe it's one of them, but it had to be second guessing it. If you're second guessing yourself, skip it. Put a little, you know, mark it on the on the computer screen, mark it on your little sheet, and get back, go back to it if you have any time left at the end. Um, and when you're done, let's say you have an hour left, or let's say you have 20 minutes left, um, don't start second guessing yourself. You know, if you thought that 
you know, okay, this is what it should be. Well, maybe it's not that, you know what, you better, you know, if you have 20 minutes left, you better off, you know what, throw in a towel and, and roll the dice um, because you never know. You could, you could have gotten it right or you're not, and you could have passed or not have passed, but don't start second guessing yourself, especially if you have some time left. You have 20 minutes, half hour, an hour left. So I had, I think, about 70 minutes left, time remaining. I think it said 70 or 80, whatever it was. It was a little more than an hour. And I went, I was going to start going through questions. Like, you know, I'm not going through this again. I already answered the ones that I marked, the ones that were blank. I answered them. And I'll see. Otherwise, you know, I could spend, you know, another day there. Yeah. They you say don't second. That's exactly what they say. Like, if you have the answer, you put it. That's go with that answer. Don't ever erase it and go back to a different one. So at this point, I think it's like 145. I, I don't know what time it is, but I, I think it's like afternoon because it's only like a little over an hour left. And I started at eight. So that puts me at around one third, whatever it is. And uh, I was like, all right, let's see. Throw in a towel and roll the dice and see what happens. And sure enough, it passed. Uh, but I, you I, what, I am nervous about the Airbnb exam. A little nervous about it. It's a lot. It's a lot you know, they have the Florida Energy Code. Um, there's a lot going on. Now, I'm not taking the Air A because that's dealing over 25 tons of cooling. But I don't think I'm ever going to need that industrial cooling, cooling power. I, I, I'm never going to use that. I want to primarily focus on, you know, residential service and repair. And, you know, if things are really busy in Florida like they are, I'll have a, you know, new construction division where we'll just, you know, build a home, build outs and homes. Yeah. And from what I see, it just it, people just build it nonstop down in Florida. It doesn't it's stop. It's, it's madness. Like I've been here over forty years. I've been, it's the last five, six have just been insanity, <laughs> true insanity. Such <laughs> growth. It's such growth. It's crazy. Um, yeah. I know you're getting. You know, we're we're running short on time, but real quick. So you feel like the most important thing is obviously using your tabs that you know that I've already tabbed. Um, utilizing those. And then focusing on like, I mean, twenty percent is good with that rate that you gave me with the according to. That's awesome mm -hmm. um, because then you can look at that. But um, I think that was my main key because that's what one of the things that the exam pro guy said. You know, use your glossary, use your um, index, don't overthink it. And um, you yep. know, so and let's say you're you know back to the the indexing tabs and highlighting because we didn't really talk about highlighting yeah. that much. You know. Um, a random page. Oh, here, there you go. So here's a random page in the in, in, in the accounting book. Like, listen, and you know you have these stupid highlighters. Let's talk about highlighting, right? Look at this page. No, this page right here. You see how yeah. it bleeds through? Yeah. If you've got a highlighter that's bleeding through, that will confuse the shit out of me. I'm right. sure it'll confuse you as well. But yeah, your eyes want to go there because it's highlighted. <laughs> so when you when you when you when you're highlighting a book, make sure it doesn't bleed through it because it'll yeah. throw you off. If you're highlighting. Yeah. The yellow seems to be just in case. Yeah, I have, I have those now for my books downstairs. Yeah, yellow um, seems to be the best. When you're doing the highlighting and, and, the, and, and the instructions, they tell you to, you know, highlight this whole paragraph. Don't highlight the whole freaking paragraph. Don't yeah. do that. Read yeah. the paragraph. Maybe put a box around the whole thing and right. underline or, or, just, or just highlight certain key words of that so you have an understanding yeah. what the paragraph's about. But if you highlight half a page – you're wasting time on the exam day reading this, trying to hope to find the answer, and um, you know it, it's it, you're just wasting time. And also, don't get frustrated. <coughs> Sorry, hold on. Don't get frustrated because this, this will happen. You're looking for an answer on parts of your books that are highlighted, and it's not there, or it'll be somewhere. Oh, it's it's here. It's unhighlighted section. Don't get frustrated that it's not there. Be, be, be proud of your accomplishment that you, hey, listen, I went to the right section, wasn't highlighted, but guess what? You know, you know, questions change. <coughs> I, um, and just make note of it, like, pat yourself on the back. Like, ha, huh, I don't need them. Yeah. I found it myself, but they helped you find, you know, learn the methods of, of taking the exam. And that's all this is about. It's not about memorization. Right. This is not about, um, this is about use of time management and knowing how to read the question and find the right answer in your books, which they're in there. That's what these exams are about. You know, you have to think about it. These are psychological uh, testing organizations. They're in a business to mess up with your brain and yeah. they only want a certain amount of percentage of people to pass. Yeah. There's a reason why, like the plumbing exam, there's a reason why only like I think 35 or 40% of the of the people taken for the first time pass. 
If you don't pass that plumbing exam your first time, you're screwed. I don't know if you know these these rates because Florida's an open yeah. record state. But if you don't pass it the first time, you could you could be taking that, that exam eight, ten times and you'll never pass. Because only at that after the first time, your rate goes from like thirty to forty percent down to like twelve percent ever to pass. And I was in a class a couple weekends ago where this a couple guys taking this took this exam eight times. That's discouraging and. It's upsetting, and that's one of the reasons why the uh, I went with Construction Estimating Institute CEI, where because they offered one day of ISO, I, the ISO drawings, and um, you re, you know it's it makes up. Listen, if you ace the plumbing exam in the state of Florida, if you ace every single one right and you fail the ISOs, you're not a master plumber in the state of Florida. Yeah. Right. If you don't get if you don't get that, I think that's thirty-three percent or whatever it is, because it's 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 <laughs> it's there. If you ace the the, the exam questions hundred percent, but you fail the ISOs, you're not a plumber in the state of Florida. Yeah. You'll you'll fail, and they'll e they'll email you the results in a couple of days. They used to give you the results right away, and I heard now they give you the results in a couple of days. Oh. From uh, Kissimmee, you'll learn this when you take your you take that class. Um, okay. The business law, you know, not not to, not to be discouraging, but gotta be gotta be real. The business law, you know, it's a little under fifty percent people pass the first time around. Um, and when you fail, they don't tell you what you got wrong. Right, and right. I believe you can probably ask for a review. Uh, I believe I could be wrong. You could do that with plumbing. Like let's say you fail the plumbing, you can ask for a review the next next time around, and they'll go over it with you. I'll show you what you got wrong. Uh, but then you have to wait to the next time after that to take the exam again. Um, I, I don't know if they do it with the business business law exam, but um, uh, under fifty percent of people pass the first time around. Uh, so it's don't let it discourage you, but you know keep in mind people do pass this. Yeah, and uh, it's not it's meant to we you know weed out the people who maybe shouldn't be doing this. They shouldn't be business owners. You know maybe right. there's a reason why you have what, not an authorized user. What do you call the the license holder? What, what, what is that called in Florida? Oh um oh gosh. Um, a registered agent. It's um yeah, the authorized party the or sponsors you. Yeah. Yeah, the person yeah, the person who's actually in charge of the company and daily operations and the finance of the company that is never there. It's like a silent investor, but they're the yeah. license holder. But yeah. um the one that gets 20% of your business. Exactly. So yeah. yeah. So, you know, if, but listen, listen, when, when, if you get a summons, right, because you guys did something wrong, it, it's not you appearing at, right now, right? Because you're not right. a license holder. It's that guy or the woman who ha is the license holder going to, to being yeah. held responsible for, you know, the actions of the, of the business that technically they're responsible for. So, yeah. Yeah. um, in New York, that doesn't exist. In New York, no. if you if you're not an owner of fifty or fifty percent or more of the company, um, it's 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 like license fraud or whatever. You know, they'll. New York is not like that, like in far as like tracking these people down, but New York doesn't exist. If, 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 um, if I, if I was a master plumber and you know, the, the person owning the majority of the company needs to be the master comp master plumber of the business, uh, South Carolina and Florida are different and other States yeah. are vastly different as well. Okay. But don't be discouraged. You know, these companies that, you know, like in South Carolina, it's called P, uh, PSI and it's psychological screening uh, Institute. <laughs> uh, they, 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 they're there to mess with your brain, but keep in mind, the exam is not memorization. It's to, you need to be able to read the question. And if you don't understand the question, look at the answers and see what, what book that's taking you to, you know, if it's a lot of accounting questions or cash management or, uh, or how to write off something, you know, um, it's going to be in that accounting book. If it's contract management, you know, really, you know, the contract states, you know, uh, owner, blah, 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 supplies and da, 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 architect and, and, and contractor does this, it's going to be in one of the IAA, IAI ones. So look at the answers. If the question makes no sense, or you're just like stumbling, like, Oh my God, what am I going to, what, what this means? This makes no sense. You know, um, look in, look at the answers and it should bring you to the, the right book generally okay great tip uh, okay so the abc uh, da, 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 so um uh, we talked about the multiple choice and yeah you know uh, and a lot of you know not every single time but majority of the time two out of those four answers of the multiple choice won't even make any sense you know like how is this related to it and you know those two aren't that 
So, so now it's it's out. Out. And 50 50. You know, yeah. and try, try to find it. But if you're going to guess, <laughs> guess consistently, because statistically, you'll be able, you'll, you'll be ahead of the game um, rather than just you know, randomly and you know, da, 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 you know, don't do that. You might as well just go across the board on all of them the same. Right. Okay. What's your um, business uh, exam? Um, July 20th. Oh, oh. July so you 20th. have a month. A month. Yes, I'm a month away. Exactly. A month. Um, you, when you get there, they only allow you to come in with just your calculator. Just so let me tell you what, what, how it worked for me at Pearson View in, in New York. <laughs> um, my exam was starts at 8 o'clock. Um, and so I got there, uh, you know, it was like an hour drive from here cause it's all the way out in Long Island. And so I got there like at seven twenty, um, and I sat in the parking lot for 10 minutes. I was like, you know, let me walk in there and see what happens. If they're, open, if they're open, great. If not, blah, blah. but I was told you, you should be, you should walk in a half hour early. So if it's eight, if it's eight o'clock, walk in at seven 30 and you'd be surprised if it's busy in there already. Mine, it was the, the waiting room was packed with people, but relatively quickly, you know, the person at the desk called me to the thing and gave me a locker and you take everything off. You take a hat off. If you're wearing sunglasses, put those away. You're wearing a watch, put that away. Any jewelry. You know, I, I, I like to wear gold. Um, jewelry goes up. You can wear a wedding ring. Um, nothing in your pockets. It's like the car key wallet, you know, put that in the locker. And you're allowed your approved books. Now, I've heard different things about different testing facilities. But I know Pearson and you, you know, they are going to skim through the book, make sure that nothing flies out of it. You know, make sure your tabs are, you know, secure, like you can't, you know, pull them out. You know, you, I like to use, you know, a label maker, right? And then I, like here, bad debts. Like I could I could pull on that, right? Because I took some packing tape, you know, clear shipping, like uh, scotch tape, and I put, wrapped it around it to the other side, and that's not going anywhere. But it's also a nice printed looking little label, a tab. Um, so they're gonna look through all your books, you know, um, you're gonna take, they can take your picture, uh, with a webcam, so you have that, and they'll make you turn out your pockets inside out, and uh, you'll have the, that white little piece of plastic, uh, a dry erase pencil, a pen, and your books, your approved books. Um, literally, where I went, and I could have you know, had all the answers and written all the books. They wouldn't. They didn't even, they didn't even look at them. They didn't. I could have a, a cheat sheet inside. Everyone they didn't even look at it. But keep on. There's a camera overhead. There's a camera there. A camera there. There's Maybe even one under the desk. Who knows? But, um, you know, if you're cheating, you know, you're, you know, it's it's criminal, you know, because yeah. you're of falsifying, course. you know, I think business records. And you're also, it's, it's in that blue book. It's in the, the Florida contractor's manual. Like, it's part of the licensing procedure. Like, if you're cheating on this exam, it's a felony. Yeah. Right? You you know, it's they're, they're going to call the police and they're going to take you out in handcuffs. Yeah. No joke. Uh, and I was stressed also when I when I went to uh, Orlando a couple of weeks ago for the plumbing exam uh, prep class. You know, we you know the instructor talked about a few things like that. Listen, you're going to cheat. They're going to they're going to find out. So don't cheat. If you're going to make it a little note inside your book or underline, you know what the answer was. You know, you know they're they can think like them. They, who are you going to give this information to? Right? Is it for future your own future reference? But you're not supposed to write in it. And even the tabs, you're not supposed to like write. You know, it's supposed to be relevant to the chapter. Well, it's supposed to be the chapter, but here I have like bad debt procedures. But guess what it is? It's bad debt procedures. <laughs> um, you know, but it's uh, time. It all comes down to time. Go through all the questions first. Just skim through all of them. And if you if you if you if you've done enough practice exams, you'll know what book th to pull the quest the answers from for each question. So. Don't get held up on, you know, on a question. If you don't know it, skip it. It's the best thing for you to do. If you spend 20 minutes trying to find, you know, dumping through books, skimming through books, it's like, oh, my God, you wasted 20 minutes. And guess what? Those 20 minutes could have cost you five, six, seven answers that you would have gotten right because you know them, right? But you get held, off on, held up on these stupid questions, and then you couldn't get – you ran out of time, and you couldn't answer the ones you would have gotten. Don't be discouraged. Go in there with a positive attitude that I'm going to do this. I'm going to pass. I want to have, I want, I want this to better my, you know, my, my life, my, you know, you know, it's just passing these, these exams uh, when you want to excel in life. Uh, you have that great sense of accomplishment. Like there's, I'll never forget the days I walked out of Char out of uh, Myrtle beach. I'll never forget the day I walked out of Islandia. You know, I took my business law exam. You'll never forget that. Right. And um, you'll remember that until you die.
and yeah. maybe pass on the story to somebody else. Like I'm yeah. passing on how I pass it. And it may, God willing, it works for you. But if it does, don't be discouraged. Just try it again. Uh, because the business law is, is I hear, is easier than the plumbing exam, the trades yeah. exams. Yeah. Is, and all of them, plumbing is the, one of the hardest ones. Okay, okay. Sorry, she's got to go out. Okay. <laughs> My pup pup. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Honestly. Thank you. I hope if you have any questions, you. email me, Mike at MikeyPipes.com. Uh, I, I don't just don't like uh, people who are watching this. It, it pisses me off when it's like two o'clock in the afternoon or eleven o'clock in the morning. Someone's calling my office to speak to me. I was like, listen, you have my email address, Mikey MikeyPipes.com. Yeah. Uh, listen, unless it's a service request and you live in my area and you want me to help you, don't call because you're just wasting time, you know, valuable resources. Send me an email. I'm always good at responding to emails. It may take you a couple of days, but I'll do it. And I just want to help others because together uh, we can make the trades great again. And you know what's awesome about that is I think when you pay it forward, it all comes back to you tenfold. So it's it's appreciated. Trust me, that's probably why your your YouTube channel is so popular. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I really do. Because trades, you. you know what? Trades are, are, oh my gosh, they're so, so, so darn important. Remember this. I, I, you, I'm sure you know this, but the people who are listening when I post this video, you will never be outsourced, ever. You, there will not be a person sitting in a call center in India who will yeah. be able to, you know, fix your, your toilet or fix your air conditioning, you know, yeah. fix the lighting in your in, in your home or office. It's working with your hands, the blue collars trades are what keeps everything going, regardless yeah. of where you are in the world. Amen. To that. The you know, if, if you're aware, if you went to, if you went to college for four years, got your MBA, got your doc, your PA, whatever it is, right? Yeah. Remember this at the end of the day, you are just as important as you know the most ex highest paid attorney doctor whatever accountant right we have if not more or equal to the amount of training that they, these people do and there's no reason why you should not command you know infinite uh, success and with that comes wealth yes, um, yes. there's no reason why you if you if if you yep. put your mind to it uh, regardless of your background where you come from it can be done as long as you have the willingness and determination to succeed you will and yep. these exams are just, they're mind fucks. They, they don't are. want you to pass. But right. if you can read and you can understand and you can find the answers in the book, you will yep. win the battle and you will become licensed. Amen. Amen to that. <laughs> Melba, it's been a pleasure. You Go too. Thank you so much. And whenever you're back down in Boyne, you know you've got to come see us. So. Gotcha. Lunch. I'll treat you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Once awesome. I was living Boynton Beach in Majestic yeah. Isles. So, uh, oh, right good. off of yeah, uh, they're, not far. they're not far from us, for sure. Yep. Awesome. So, you, you'll be the first phone call I make. Or first and text. I will see you. I will see you in a kiss of me. Yes, for sure. We'll in okay. You have a awesome. wonderful Thank evening. You, Thank you, Melba. All right. Bye-bye. God bless you. too. Bye-bye.